Okay, you guys, um, this is a tutorial um, uh, teaching you guys how to make a ba base mesh out of C-spheres. So let's get to it. The first thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to import, um, or we're going to actually load a tool, um, which is going to help us with uh, measurements. We're going to choose an 8 head. And this is going to be an sub tool. We're going to draw it. We're going to go into edit. So we can actually see this. And there you go. Okay. So we have it on our first sub tool. This is number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, for here, this first over here, this is where the head is going to go. This one right over here is uh, going to indicate where the clavicle and basically where the neck ends and the shoulders begin. Um, uh, right over here, we're going to have the pretty much the nipples. Uh, right over here, we're going to have um, the navel. Um, right on this one is going to be the bottom of the pelvis. This is going to be mid-thigh. This is going to be the knee, mid-leg. Uh, and uh, finally, the bottom of the feet. So let's. Um, we are going to um, append a C sphere. Now, with W, we're going to go in here. We're going to keep this one on. Uh, with W, we are going to make sure to. Oh, and let's remember to have uh, X symmetry on, as we can see. And with W, we're, we'll be able to move it up a bit. With E, we're going to scale it down. Up to the third one. Let's... Um, Sorry, let's hide this layer. We are going to create, um, let's bring the draw size all the way down to one, or very close to one. Uh, and we are going to create, you're going to see that we have this green uh, circles. When they become one, that means that you're going to be able to draw just one C, one C sphere, but it's going to be centered. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the, on the original sphere drag and by hitting shift at the same time you're going to create one that it's the same size as you can tell there you go if we uh click on the letter a you're going to be able to see uh what we call the the skin the c skin um right now it looks funky because uh, c spheres need more than uh, more than two spheres to actually create uh a mesh so hit A again, and it takes you back to the actual C-spheres. We're going to go to the other side of the original C-sphere, and we're going to do the same. With Q, we are going to create click, drag, and shift. Actually, I did that wrong. Click, drag, and shift. All right, so now it's much better. With W, I'm going to move it up a little bit. See, if we didn't have X symmetry, as soon as I moved this, it would go either this way or that way, whichever my hand will be um, biased to. Um, in this, it doesn't matter if it goes um, back or forth, uh, because we obviously, um, the figure will actually have to curve in one of these directions. We can bring this one down too. Let's bring the head measures. Let's see. So this is basically are going to be our torso. So we're going to bring this guy over here, and we're going to have this guy right over here because this is our fourth one. Is one, two, three, and four. Yeah, that is where the bottom of the pelvis will be. Let's get rid of these guys because we have symmetry. We're going to create an arm. It's going to create it on the other side. On th in this case, oh, sorry, that's the move tool. We're going to have to go to draw or queue. 
I'm going to create one. These ones don't have to be with shift, so because they don't have to be the same size as this. And another one for the leg. All right. So now we have. Sometimes these things occur. <laughs> it means there's an error somewhere. Let's say there you go. Sometimes when you click off uh, or double click or do weird things, and the C spheres will move, and uh, it will create problems, especially when you're under the draw menu. Uh, when you're in, the, in either the move or scale or rotate, that those kinds of things don't don't tend to happen that often. So now that we have that we are going to continue. Let's hit A again. See how that happens as soon as I, d I did that. Okay, we're going to create another sphere that's going to be the same size as this one. So again, we're going to click on it. We're going to drag and shift. Same thing here. Click, drag, and shift. And that one is going to create the same size. With move, we're going to bring these guys down and we're going to pull these ones out to create our arms. Now roughly, the arms should follow somewhere around this area. So that's fine for now. If you click on the middle parts in between, um, between e basically a C-sphere is going to be a joint. Um, is going to dictate the form also, but anything in between this extrapolated C spheres, if you move from there, you can actually rotate things, and uh, they will it will control everything that it's. You know, let's say that I, I'm going to build a hand right over here. If I move this, it's going to move it with the hand and all. Let's bring our measuring measuring guides. Let's see what's going on. We we did that pretty good. Uh, let's bring this guy a little up. This hips go down, bring this down. There you go. Uh, we have to give it a little bit better posture. Down. We are going to create another C sphere. Uh, so with the Q. Uh, key. I'm going to hit it right here in the middle and we're going to create elbows. Now with W move we can move them. We can move this a little bit back. Alright. With this one we can, oops. And as you can tell, because we have X symmetry, it does everything on the other side, so we don't have to do it twice. Okay, we have this correct, and the knees were like around the perfect. Now we're going to create the head. If you hit Shift F, you're going to be able to see your wireframes. As you can tell, every time you put a C sphere it changes the polygroups and you can tell by the different colors on them. Okay. Alright, so let's go to Shift F so we can see what we're doing. We're going to create the head. And again, actually before I do that, let me create this chest a little bit bigger so we're going to scale it with the letter E. There we go. We can bring the shoulders a bit out. Let's check our configure. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so uh, let's bring this down a little bit more. We can check this. And yeah, actually they have to go a lot down. So, because shoulders are supposed to be down here. There we go. Let's bring this elbows a bit down. Somewhere there. 
longer. Okay. Okay, now let's create with the Q key. Now we have uh, we're we're going into draw mode by hitting the Q key. Let's get in the middle. Click, drag, and it doesn't have to be with the shift because we don't need it to be the same size as the um, torso or the chest. I'm sorry. We're but on this one we are going to have to create one that is the same size. So click, shift, and I mean click, drag, and shift, I'm sorry. We're gonna go up. That's our neck. Another one. Hit the Q key. Click, drag. This one doesn't matter if it's a little bigger because obviously it's gonna be the head. Uh, he's a little bit head big, <laughs> a little head heavy. Let's see, he looks like Gumby. All right. So let's bring this baby a little down. So with the scale, the E key, the E key, let's bring this guy down a little bit and down. Down a little bit. Right. Now it seems to me that the legs are a bit too thick. So are the arms. So we're going to work on that uh, with the scale tool. If you hit right here in the middle, we're just going to have to bring them out a little bit with the W key. Scale this down. W. Down here and down here again. Let the legs go a little bit in. Uh, there we go. Let's See if the posture is correct. The pelvis needs to be a little bit out. I think that's right for the shoulders. Let's tape it this guy is a little bit down with E key. Hit the bottom one. Bring him down a little bit. Get rid of our guides for now. We are going to create oops. We are going to create two C spheres, one in the in the back for the talon and one on the front, I'm or sorry for the heel, and one on the front for the rest of the foot. So we're gonna do our uh, with the with the draw or the Q key. We are going to hit the front, drag, shift. Same thing here in the back. Click, drag, and shift. Now I hit the E key. Um, for the reason that what I told you guys before, when you try to move or um, hit on the canvas, sometimes the C spheres they create issues. They 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 become they create problems with the mesh. Um, it must be a problem with ZBrush. So the best way of doing that is when you want to manipulate anything in here. All you got to do is just hit the A A key and get into mesh, and then you can move it or um, uh, fix the the actual camera to one of the planes. Okay, so having said that, we're going to move feet a little bit right towards the front right now. Now feet tend to be like that towards the side, but obviously that's not going to work. 
I'm going to bring him forward and heal. Now we know that in reality a foot doesn't look like this, but what we're trying to do is just to create a really basic mesh that we're going to be able to um, control and manipulate later on with uh, the sculpting the sculpting brushes. So this won't matter how it looks, it can look very boxy to begin with. Let's see, I like what I'm seeing so far. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is work on the hands. Real quick right here. And how we're going to do this is we're going to add five spheres. We're going to add one to the thumb. Whoops, that's the move key. Q, create one, two, three, four, and a little one right here, five. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. We're going to do our... We're going to get C-spheres that are exactly the same size as these ones. So with our Q key, we're going to click, shift, and click, drag, and shift. Click, drag, and shift. Oop, that didn't want to come out. There you go. Click, drag, and shift. Click, drag, and shift. And click, drag, and shift. Okay. So now with the W key, we're going to extend them. That's our thumb, ring finger, I mean, uh, one finger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. Okay. Now, this kind of stuff would be tedious to do in Maya. It, it, it's, it's, it's actually quite difficult to get it to work in Maya. Um, not difficult, but time-consuming, definitely. So this guy should be more on the side. So this is the thumb. Let's see how they look. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, well, that just looks weird. <laughs> and like I said, it it's just supposed to be an approximation because we're going to completely move all the stuff around and create uh, and we're going to modify it to create it. Now let me see if that is those are quite small let's bring this in. okay this is a little too far let's bring this okay now we're going to create the knuckles. Now with the Q key. The thumb only has one. So we're going to do that. And it tends to look sideways, just like that. Move it forward on the hand. Now we're going to create knuckles right over here. One, two, three, four. And we're going to bring these babies forward. We're going to rotate them. Oops, nope. What am I doing? With the W key. Oh no. We're going to push them backwards. This one backward, and again, this in 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 Maya. As much as I love Maya, this would be quite difficult uh, because you have to turn all the poly polys and all the, um, the vertexes to actually match what you're trying to do. So 
match the curvature of it. That seems to me like this finger is a bit too thin. So I'm just going to scale this, this, and this. Didn't want to scale it full. There you go. Let's see how it looks. All right. And the second set of knuckles, right over here, right over here, here, and right over here. And we're going to move them also. So, move this guy, move this guy. All right, so with the A key. You guys are wondering what this is. This is the transpose transpose line. We will I'll teach you guys how to use that one later. That's how you move polygons or you know sets of polygons at a time. Okay, nice curvature to the fingers. Looking good. I don't know if they're the correct size as far as the hands go. We'll have to measure that. Okay. Right over here, we're gonna create uh, a C sphere, a C sphere for the for the wrist. So click, and we're going to reduce the size of it by this by using the scale key. Again, let's bring it a little bit closer. We can rotate this. Mm, let's rotate. Come on. Why is it not working? There you go. Thank you. Good. Yep. We're going to create another one right over here. To give the forearm a little bit of mass. Uh, the scale tool. Just a tad. Another one right here to create the bicep. Oops. E. Not much. Just move it a little bit down. That's good. Same. Nicely done. Kind of a muscly guy. I think I am going to bring this guy's in a bit. Seems a little bit too big. Uh, forward. You always have to check for gesture on this because the C spheres tend to move quite a bit. The top is done for that one. Mm-hmm. And usually we rotate no. the hand should be somewhere right there by the thighs. And if we put them up this way, this length should be the same length as the height. Now a good way to do that is by hitting shift S and we can move it. Whoop. Let's control and that. What I want to do is I'll 
this one on and shift s and that gives us a copy and let's rotate it and let's see mm, I need to be a little bit longer it's just a little bit of space in here okay so control N to get it back a and we are going to hit guy A and we let's see I move in oops no we're gonna scale it well, let's just move them from here with scaling is that it does it globally like in every direction so it's just going to pump up the arms is what it's going to do unfortunately when you do that when you try to move that it moves everything, it moves the fingers. Um, you know what? We can do it later on once we have it um, in the mesh, it's a lot easier that way. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Um, really, it's trivial the amount of length that we have to add. Let's do that. Let's put it back there. There you go. They're close enough for the time being. Okay, let's add a C sphere for the thigh uh, with the E tool to bump it up a little bit. Another one for the calves. And move it, and we got to move it backwards. Another C sphere right here for the ankles to make them a little bit thinner. Now keep in mind that in essence, theoretically, you could just use this guy right now the way it is. And it will be perfectly fine to work on a mesh this low like that. Let's make sure that everything's still correct. Yep. Thigh forward raise this backwards let's raise this one up a bit and we can create another C sphere right over here to create the knee a little bit more volume for it okay just F to see if what we're doing Okay. Let me move these ones a little bit in. So I was just going to take the shape of the female of these big, hi big hips. Move it in. Okay. That looks good. I am going to add another C sphere right here to make the neck a little bit thinner. So with Q key, add one, scale it down, bring it down a little bit, scale it down. See how that looks? Yep, that's lo that looks good. Oops, let's try this one. Nice. 
Okay, so again, this is our blocked out. Oh, we need to put before I go any further. We need to put the 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 toes. <laughs> That's important. Okay, just like how we did uh, with the uh, with the hands, it's pretty much the same process. Let me bring these heels down a little bit. They're a bit too big for my taste. Bring it down. Let's see, is that any better? Yeah, that's a little better. Outside. Okay. The feet should be the same length as the forearm. As a rule. And that's pretty close. Okay, so let's add those ones with the Q key. We're going to add one, that's the big toe, bring that baby down, way too high up there, and a little bit more to the side. Okay, let's make another one with the Q key. Two, three, whoops, four, and the little guy, five. Again, let's, let's, let's check it. As what we did with the hand, let's create a C sphere so the same size as the parent. So, click, drag, and shift. 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 Okay, so now with the move tool, we're going to bring them forward. Bada bing, bada boom. Whoops. got to keep in mind that the toes tend to move towards the inside, especially the, the outside toes. If you look at your foot, you're going to see that your toes do not go in this direction like if the hand would. They tend to go towards the inside, towards the big toe. And the big toe is it's like that. So let's see. How is that looking? Okay, good. Scale this baby down a little bit. That's about the length of the forearm, yeah. We're going to create knuckles for it. Q key. The big toe has one knuckle. One, two, three, four for the little guys. We're going to move them in place. These guys go up a little bit. Up. Up. Up a little bit. I'm just going to move it towards the inside. I know that the little toe is all jacked up. I don't know if you guys, and most people, it's all messed up. up. I don't know if we can add another C sphere to actually get the shape that we want, but we can try. Q, C sphere, C sphere, C sphere, C sphere. And with the move tool, we're going to go like that, like that, down, and down. Let's make sure that these guys are in the right direction. All right, let's see. That looks good. That looks good, good, good. I think I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So scale it down. Scale it down. 
Let's see. That is much better. Mm hmm. Okay. I want to make this one a tad. Whoops. This one's a tad smaller. For the scale tool. Like again, you have to keep checking proportions and gesture and cause otherwise you may just find yourself with a figure that doesn't look anything what it's supposed to look like. Rotate on the other side. Oops. Okay. Let's see. Sideways. It's looking good. If you put a, a plumb line where the ear should be, it should go right through the shoulders. It should go through the trochanter and down so this guy's a little bit tilted forward uh, we need to rotate him back I said rotate why is it not rotating nope not that one there you go so I usually use the edge of the canvas to make sure that things are straight. So the ear should be somewhere here in the back. And as you can tell it goes right in front of the ankle and it goes right where the head of the trochanter is in the shoulder. So we have a balanced figure. That's how humans are. You can bring this guy a little bit down. see hey mm-hmm that looks good for now now something that you guys gotta understand uh, with, that I would like to teach you guys is that um, ZBrush offers two different um, algorithms for skinning what we just did every time we hit the A key that means you're skinning those uh, C spheres and this is the most modern one this is the, the skinning two and it uh, works very well it acquires the, the exact pretty close to the shapes that you're trying to get um, the only problem with this one is that it creates like for example here in the hand if you can see this uh, polygons where there's five polygons sharing one corner uh, or more sometimes in this case six and that can create problems later on and uh, pinching problems and, and stuff like that um, not something that we can worry that much nowadays it used to be a problem back in the time because um, nowadays we'll just dynamesh this this kind of um, um, skin and create just um, tiny little polygons everywhere is going to even it out and we will be able to uh, easily um, just sculpt it um, but there is another uh, the classical skinning if we hit that um, button and we hit A again you're gonna see how different it is see it's a lot more square um, it seems to have issues trying to accommodate the the, the feet and the fingers um, but it's got better topology so that is one good thing about it if you move this one the intersection resolution and the membrane curvature and all that sometimes you can fix those problems so let's see that works a little bit better for the fingers if you can as you can tell and it's got square if we make this into a 3 
must be in the distant area of the solution. Radian. About five. All right, it already turns into a square. Uh, sometimes you get better resolution. With this one, I think the, the problem is that the C sphere has been turned. Minimal skin to child, minimal skin to parent. Uh, playing around with this thing sometimes helps. Yeah. That one's not working too well. Uh, it's creating a little bit better mesh without that pinching. Again, this was something that was more useful when you couldn't DynaMesh projects. But nowadays, you've, you, you can DynaMesh things, so it's not such a big deal. But this actually gives you a better f edge flow on a lot of these things. Let's see. That's too much. How about five? How about three? See, it just g jumps from one to the next one doesn't do much. Four. About five. Mm, yeah, it jumps from one to the other one very easily. Anyway, the good thing about this one, what I was going to mention, is that um, it allows you to create uh, insets. So if I want to create eyes and uh, an opening for the mouth, I can do it. Uh, the new type of skinning, the algorithm, does not allow for that. It actually crashes the program. So, let's see. I'm wondering why I can't use this. Zero. And free dream divide, okay. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Let's not use classic skin for now. That's our regular one. Okay. So let's go to Q. Oh, I have to do that. Shift F. And we can create an I. And then by moving it in, it creates that. It creates like little holes. There you go. Now I'm not even going to attempt to do it with the regular skinning because if I do, it's going to crash it. But we can use classical skinning, and as you can see, it creates already um, the topology for the eyes. Um, let's go back. We can create a nose now. Oh, let's say Q. We can create a nose. And we can create a mouth. We'll move it back until it disappears. Oh, that's too far right there and we can create ears Q key there you go now with that you'll be able to see uh, we have used classical skinning preview and you'll see that it does all of that for us already now I don't like this. We're gonna have to go back to this. One second. Okay, that's about three.
And what you can do, I mean, in reality, what what you can do is you you can create two skins. You can create one with um, the the most uh, skinny number two, or you can do it with classical skinning. Keep two versions and see which one works better for you. That's no big deal. Actually, that looks good. I think I'm going to keep it this way. Don't really like this ball over here, but let's see if we upsize this or create. Um, if we actually create. Let's see, because I hit Control Z and I don't know if I've messed up something. But let's see if we create a, a different topology here, maybe by adding a C-sphere. Let's see what happens. We're using classical skinning. Let's upsize that. No, let's move it. What happens? No, that just messes it up even more. Maybe if we make this guy smaller smaller and see what happens nope. let's see what happens hmm so as you can tell it's kind of an ugly topology but it doesn't create the problems with the triangles I mean with um, multiple polygon co uh, corners and it doesn't cr and it allows us to create um, these um, the geometry that we're going to need later on for the mouth, for the eyes, for the nose, and the ears. So I'm going to skin one this way. I'm going to show you how that is. Uh, we're going to leave it like that and make adaptive skin. Bam. And you are going to find it right up here. Skin C, C sphere you can append that I append and you're gonna find it right over here skins is fear there and there it is now you have it now we can go back to this one uh, go out of preview and let's take this classical skin out oh, you're gonna see that because this guy is under views on it I am going to save because at this point, I don't know if this is going to crash. We're going to attempt. Uh, where is this? Mm, versus tools. Uh, I don't have one for this guy, so I'm just going to create, an, I guess, a new folder for it. Boxman. Or base mesh. Let's call it base mesh base mesh man and click on that accept it base whoops base mesh man zero zero one and you can yeah just like leave it at that save And let's see what happens. Unless they have updated this since the last time I did it with Forge, this should crash as soon as we try to do this. We'll see. Well, it didn't crash, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> that is one funny looking character. <laughs> no, I just don't like that. Um. Let's create a, an adaptive skin of that one. That's another one. You're going to find it right over here. Again, we can append another version of it. Uh, it kind of tells you which one it is. It's this one over here. Seabrush is weird. Instead of naming the newest one, C uh, Skin Sea Sphere 1 is going to rename the old one, Skin Sea Sphere 1, instead of doing it the other way around. 
So sometimes that's that's confusing, at least for me. So let's do this again. So we have this guy, we have this guy. Okay. I'm gonna go back to this. I'm gonna turn this one off. I'm gonna hit A again. In under Q or withdraw, you are going to be able to hit with the Q key in the Alt key. You're going to be able to erase these guys. Bam, bam, bam. I guess we can leave those ones for the um, for the ears, and let's create the other one for the nose. Just so it's there. At least we create that. Let's hit A, see what happens. Okay. So at least we have that. Wonder what would happen if we create another one. But anyway, that's pretty much the base meshes th that we need. Um, you guys can feel free to either delete these and just have a regular skin for it. Uh, let's create another skin. Adaptive skin, make adaptive skin, boom, it created another one. You're going to see it right over here. So go to append, whoops, and hit the new C I mean skin C sphere. And now we have three. Um, so we have this guy. We have this guy. Oops. Th that just looks weird. <laughs> but again, we can actually work with that later. And we have this guy. I think this one is going to be the more uh, the one that is more likely to get the nod. So, uh, in the next video, I will show you guys how to start working on this. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.